Now this is why we don't let children ride on fenders, you know, unless they got a roll bar they can hold on to for dear life or whatever. Because when that thing went, I mean it flew, it was just cool. This thing was underneath that rear wheel. Come on, get in there. This thing was underneath that rear wheel faster, actually second gear. This thing was underneath that rear wheel before I even realized what was happening to it. Same thing happens to people if you're not careful. Alright, so I've been driving machinery of various types, big and small, for 14 years roughly at this point, and this is the first time I've ever managed to catch an exhaust on anything. I'm glad I made it as far as I did, and I'm glad that nothing majorly bad happened. Now this is an important lesson in why when you build exhaust systems for things like farm machinery, it's important that you use relatively thin wall pipe for this. You don't use like schedule 40 steel pipe that you happen to have laying around your welding shop. Because in a situation where something like this hits a tree branch, something has to give and either it's going to be this pipe or you'll shear the exhaust manifold off the tractor, like break off the part where the pipe goes into or something. And uh, this is pretty much the best we can hope for. You can also see, uh, I think that was a cricket at some point. And uh, yeah, now when I ran this over with the tractor when it fell off all the way, it was so hot you can actually see, I think that's from the tire that ran over it. So, um, yeah, so what is that? Probably a sixteenth of an inch thick. <sighs> Let's weld it back together and then get back out there. It sucks, but if you ain't making stuff, if you ain't breaking stuff, you ain't making stuff. There we go. So yesterday, man, am I happy with the way that yesterday went. That hay that I was putting down, you know, I thought previously that dragging the Zetter out here, that's a pretty powerful machine. It's uh, actually disproportionately high horsepower for the physical size of the unit. So that's what, one thing that makes it a really good hay tractor. Uh, but anyway, I thought, man, you know, what's the bare minimum you need to run one of these drum mowers? It's like 35 horsepower or something. And this tractor is substantially more than that. So this is really like probably too much tractor to be using on this, but am I glad that I had it yesterday because this thing chugging along, it was making that tractor grunt. Even though we were only in first gear high range, so sixth gear really, uh, it, was, it was chugging pretty good. And uh, I am so, so happy because that is the thickest, greenest, lushest, all around nicest hay that I've ever put down. Uh, I can't wait to see how this comes out all bailed up, you know, barring issues with, <laughs> with that because it's the first time I've used the baler too. So I'm a little anxious about that, but you know, I'm super happy with the way everything's going right now. The people who own this land, they're some of my nicest customers. I really, really like them. They're just super, super nice people, great to deal with. And um, yeah, it's just everything is going great right now. So hopefully that continues today. Exhaust is on. And I fueled up the tractor and only drank about a gallon an acre yesterday, at least by my bad. 